Okay, so something a bit different today. We're down here doing some urban chubbing, right in the centre of town. We're just going to have a wander down, see if we can spot some fish. We've seen a few fish out in the main river. See if we can get one down here, and then we'll put our waders on and carry on. Okay. Oh, you what? Oh, nose off. Really? Yeah. Okay, so we just um, we just had one on a two centimeter hornet in the sinking version. I had tried previously with a uh, a tiny off the top, but whether the rain and the cold water going in has put them down just a bit, they wouldn't come up to it. So changed to a sinking version, and straight away we got one. So uh, we'll give them a bit of a rest and then we'll, um, we'll have another go. Okay, so, okay, so we've got the waders on, we've got out. Um, I actually came down for a recce on Sunday and I think the river's probably come up nine inches, maybe a foot from where it was on Sunday. So it started to really push as well. Colour's still good, so not too bad, but um, I think it might be a bit tricky. We've seen fish over the back of these rushes here, and I'm just putting it in behind. I've got a tiny floating at the moment, see if I can get one off the top, which would be good. If not, we'll go to uh, a sinking version and um, see if that uh, sorts them out. The tiny is also, also you can retrieve it really fast and get some incredible aggressive takes on it when you're retrieving it fast. It runs just underneath the surface and um, in the right conditions, the chub seem to love it. So the other thing is 
you've got two arches here where the water slowly comes through. Um, that can be good for a fish or two. So we'll try one up there. Okay, so uh, I've come up through one of the arches now, casting downstream. Got a sinking hornet on, two centimetres, so it's going down in, just bringing it back up against the stream. Um, hoping for a chub, um, but I also had two big perch here on Sunday, so there's a few perch around as well. But, um, as I said, the, the river has changed so much from Sunday. It's a good, I would say it's a foot up, but it's pushing. And I think during the course of the day, with the rain that we had last night, it's gonna get worse. So uh, hopefully we'll take another fish or two before it um, turns into too much of a bowl, boiling cauldron. So, as with all fishing, chub is about location, location, location. Um, I normally look for any feature, it's very similar to perch if you like, they love overhanging bushes, you know, anything that hangs over, they can sit under. Obviously insects, bugs and everything fall off of those bushes and they're dropped down in. Beds of rushes that we've got across from us, they like to sit in behind just out of the flow, get a little bit of rest out there. And they can just move out and feed as they want and move back in. So anything that's got a feature on the far bank normally, but don't neglect your own bank. You look at the far bank and you think, yeah, that bush over there, fantastic, really good. There's got to be chub over there, but why wouldn't there be chub under the bush on your own bank? So it's really useful. Don't always think far bank. Also think what's easier under your own bank. And we get a lot of chub on the Thames, fishing close in underneath our own bushes. And that is really visual fishing. So it's exciting as well, because you'll see just a pair of white lips come up and engulf your lure with a bit of luck. Okay, so I've been fishing quite a lot of either sinking small hornets or a sinking tiny. Um, we had a lot of cold water go in last night. It literally, it was a monsoon conditions last night, all the way through. In good conditions, I love taking them right off the top and uh, I'm just giving it a go. I've st stuck on a little bug, float up on the top, you can just twitch it back. And like I say, in normal conditions, you'd expect to get some really violent takes off the top. Not sure it's gonna to happen today, but I'm giving it a go, because if you don't try it, you don't know. So um, I've stuck one on. They cast really well. Um, it is literally a flick out across to the far side. Let it stick. Chub come to the plop. So. I often cast with a high trajectory so that when it goes into the water, plop. Leave it static, don't start your retrieve straight away. So you leave it static and the number of times that chub will just come up, turn over and engulf the lure and you've got fish on. So tight across, on the top, pause, don't start your retrieve straight away and just let the chub come to it, which is what they do. Oh! 
Did you see that? I did see it, but I was filming. <sighs> that was a proper fish. That was a proper one. Yeah, it missed it. It missed it. Come up. That's the one chance. I didn't touch it. It didn't touch yeah. your. Yeah. yeah. But. That's the trouble, is it because it's pushing here? Yeah, that's a bit of a Alright, so a quick catch up then, um, and a little bit of information. Um, set up for chub fishing, you don't need nothing too technical. I've got two rods here today, they're both rated 3 to 14 grams. One's a Salmo, one's a Fox Terminator. 2,000 size, 2,500 size reel. Loaded with 8 to 12 pound braid, depending on your choice. Um, I'm using fluorocarbon, I'm using 713 as a leader and I usually, if I'm using small lures, I'll tie direct to the fluoro. If I'm using larger lures and I'm going to be changing a lot, I'll use a little micro snap at the end of the fluoro. Um, today I've been using a lot of very small lures, so I've been tying direct. Um, that's about it as far as the rods are concerned. Where we've been fishing today, um, we've had a little bit on the bank and then the rest has been wading. Um, so yeah, pair of chesties. This is Brill. Little chest pack, um, street fighter range, really, really good. You can get everything you want in the front. You can get drinks bottle and a few other bits and pieces in the back. Sits nice and comfortable. You can attach your net to it. Basically, you're there and ready to go. Right, so we've um, we've been getting fish coming up to little bug in the larger sizes, but for some reason they're just not hooking up. And quite often when you find that they come up and they swirl, and they're taking short, what I found that works quite well in that sort of situation is to suspend a single on a micro snap, and those that are taking short very often come up and catch that just in the scissor. So we'll try it. Okay, so um, yes, yeah, been a tough one. We had a couple early doors and then we've struggled and then we've had a couple come up and hit the lures and not hook up. Um, I've had a pike as well. Um, but yeah, overall, it's been a tough one. So, uh, lures I've been using today, Salmo Tiny, as its name suggests, just a small lure. I use it a lot in the floating version. Sits up nicely. Um, you can cast it to get a good plop, even though it is small. Um, and if they don't take it on the plop, you can give a good fast retrieve to it and it'll run just underneath the surface. Great little lure. Love it. Um, also been using the two centimeter Hornet in a sinking version. 
Um, using that because with the fresh water in, the fish haven't been coming up to the top. Um, so I've run it to run it a little bit deeper, see if I could get any interest that way. And the other one that I've been using, when the sun's come out, uh, is the little bug. And we've actually had a couple of smash takes off the top on that. One that came off um, and the others that missed the lure. But yeah, it's been a tough one, but interesting. Beautiful river, lovely scenery. So regardless of whether you've caught a lot or not, it's been a good day.